Encyclopedia Britannica calls our next guest the first charismatic. I'm a first generation Pentecostal because, you see, I did not come into this in any tradition. I had never heard any teaching about it. I knew nothing whatsoever about Pentecostal churches. He came to lunch one day and he said, something funny going on in my church. And then he told me about this couple. They've got, had this experience, whatever it is. And they claim they speak in tongues. Well, that about shut me down there, you see. <laughs> and finally, I began to see these people are making sense. Uh, they kept going to the Bible. That's not fair, you know. <laughs> and, and they seemed like they, they thought it was, they really meant what it said. If I say first generation Pentecostal, we got to look at something not all messed up with traditions and holiness and evangelical this and that. We just got to, because here we were, Episcopalians, prayer book Episcopalians, good solid Bible people. We read three times out of the Bible every service in our churches. But uh, uh, here, we didn't know anything about this, so it came to us fresh. And man, was it wonderful. Now, there's certain things about us Episcopalians which do tickle me. We can sing the most, we can sing and say the most beautiful things in the most cool way. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Now, let me tell you. O oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. Right? <laughs> Every one of us has in us the ability to be spoken to by God. We know when God speaks to us, if we're listening, because we have an inner spiritual nature made in God's image. The Lord said the next step is to receive power, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's very clear. Next step is to receive power. I happen to be one of the early ones that was run out of the woods, as I say. Now, St. Luke, Seattle was about as dead as an Episcopal church or any other church could get. When I came in 1960, they had the shovel out. In six months, the budget of this little church tripled. In one year, the attendance has quadrupled. I'm stealing your thunder, Rita, but I'll say it because... No, you're not at all. <laughs> I know. We're partners in, in ministry all, all the way. A nine o'clock book wouldn't have been written without Rita. She, she kept me at it. Uh, <laughs> Somebody has to stand there. That's help, help. Yeah. More than that. Thank right. God for them, yes. Yeah. No, you, you, you're one of the old timers. I think you were filled with the Holy Spirit in 1959, and you've been just declaring the goodness of God ever since. We didn't have very much money. I was the eldest of four children, a younger brother, immediately younger than I, and two sisters. I had parents who prayed. I had parents who went to church. I had parents who told me early on about Jesus. So uh, I gave my heart to Jesus at age 10. Uh, each student was supposed to either give a testimony or to sing or play an instrument or to do something. And when uh, the pastor came to me, uh, he said, well, Billy, what would you like to do? And I said, I'd like to preach. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I wrote, uh, when I wrote the book, uh, Surgery of the Soul, I wrote in there what I considered to be the patient's uh, Bill of Rights. Uh, somehow, uh, love is a quality that can't be built into a hospital. That's, it's built into human beings. One doctor once said to me, leave your Christianity in the church house where it belongs. I said that if uh, Christianity doesn't mean something in the operating room, it doesn't mean anything at all. You know who I heard about Jesus from when I did hear about him? I heard about him from the patients. I remember a young man whose name was Wendell Phillips. He was dying of acute myelogenous leukemia. So we, we laid hands on the blood. And when I'd go in there, with, if he was getting an IV, I'd lay hands on the IV. And I wasn't even a fanatic then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but what we need is God. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. We need the power of his resurrection. We need evangelistic uh, medical doctors who see as their primary position, leading men and women to a living Lord Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit, Praise medical God. evangelist. Yeah. That was also a very good preacher. <laughs>